fascinated, fascinated watching from afar this Doja Cat implosion. This Doja Cat implosion has been absolutely fascinating to watch from the outside in. Seeing her basically, um, you know, without any regard, try her best to piss off her fucking fans. And I actually like it. A part of me thinks that's actually the ultimate version of punk, right? Not caring about your fans, telling them, look, I don't love you. We're not friends. I don't really care about you that way. I'm the reason why I'm successful, you're not, and all that malarkey, and actually being honest, because I feel like a lot of people out there, a lot of artists in particular, especially pop acts, do that whole kind of fake fan service and loving the fan shit, when in reality, they don't care about their fans. They'd rather just turn up, do their show, you know, hand wave, you know, throw out a couple fucking heart symbols, you know, air kisses and keep it moving. But at least those are being somewhat honest about it. And I love watching it kind of play out in real time. Because I feel like even though it's very punk of her to do so, I feel like it's not honest. I feel like she's just kind of having a bit of a bad moment, maybe going through something back home, whatever, mentally, something's happened. But I don't feel like she actually doesn't care about her fans. She's just a bit frustrated and annoyed right now. So I'm sure it'll change. But because nowadays fans do have, some fans have this, I wouldn't even say entitlement. They sometimes feel very empowered in their fandom in that they feel like they're contributing to your success. They love the fact that they can actually help you become more successful in some ways. It brings them pleasure to see you become more successful, to see you become more famous, more rich, whatever it may be. So in the same token, if you piss them off, they actually want to make it very clear that when they're over you, they're over you. And I know from my own personal, personal experience, and I've had some one or two bad um interactions with celebrities here and there but i know from my own very anecdotal evidence that when i had a very bad interaction with the guys who founded the company palace right back in the day many many years ago when they first started it kind of ruined the brand for me ever since then and i've never worn it since then i've never bought anything from them i've never been to the store nothing I've completely excommunicated a brand from my head. All from that one brief interaction I had with one of the founders where it kind of didn't go the way I probably thought it would go in my head. Maybe because I said something bad, I looked too short. Who knows? Maybe they were in the wrong. Maybe I was fully in the wrong, but whatever. It didn't go well and I completely fucking deleted it from my brain. So I think stands have the same sort of mindset that I have. Even though I'm a little bit more bitter and fucking twisted about it in my own way, I think as a fan, if you overly love something, when that thing you overly love spits in your face, it can be a real affront. It can really fucking just turn you off completely. So it's no surprise to see that some of the fans are en masse unfollowing her, like legitimately unfollowing Doja Cat to a point where you got this little graphic here from Pop Base that says Doja Cat loses over 200,000 followers on Instagram following the fans' controversy. Like she's actually have fans who are going unfollow because they don't like her and they're not really too fans about it, right? Um, but yeah, exactly, exactly. See, I knew Usha is always plugged in. But that's a funny thing about this whole thing, right? Usha says in the chat here, it's just Twitter, Twittering, she'll be fine. That's the funny thing about it. Like, I feel like nowadays, if you're a star or whatever it may be, it's actually the best time to be a star because I feel like sometimes your fan base is somewhat segmented. It's not, they're not all encompassing. So I feel like if you're a Doja Cat, you have fans who like you just on Instagram. I honestly think this is the thing. I think there are fans of Doja Cat because she's that big. There are fans of Doja Cat who like her for her fucking crazy Instagram lives. There's, f there's fans of Doja Cat that like her for her fashion. There's fans of Doja Cat that like her for her, you know, cosmetic changes and shit, like shaving her hair, different colors of fucking wigs and shit, makeup. There's things, there's people that like her on Twitter, people that like her on YouTube, people that like her music, people that like her dance, her choreography. The fans are so segmented that I don't actually think this actually matters in the grand scheme of things because it's not like all her fans are turned off it's just the particular stand side of her fan base doesn't like her anymore because she's not reciprocating how normal artists do right when normal artists have stands they reciprocate by like you know taking part in their discussions you know retweeting stuff saying i love you um, maybe sharing them out on live whatever it may be right they just reciprocate but she's clearly saying i don't want to do that i fucking hate you guys leave me alone so 
even though she's losing fans, it's only a particular type of fan, as Uche mentioned, it's a particular type of fan. Right, so that makes some complete sense. Yo, big up my guy Rodeo. Um, big up Rodeo in the chat. Big up, big up. So as you can see, another graphic here saying the same thing. She's losing fans. Um, and then of course the other side of things, you've got this courtesy of Pop Crave that says Doja Cat's top fan pages are all disactivating as well. Um, and these are fairly decent fan pages, right? They're not like small ones. These are fairly, I feel like, decent enough fan pages for you to worry about because, in my opinion. Fan pages are, are somewhat important nowadays because there's not enough meat. There's not a lot of media out there that really covers everybody in exhaustive detail because there's just too many people to cover. There's too many artists. There's just too much music to cover everybody and cover everything they do. So they always focus on the top, I don't know, 20 people. So I feel like stan pages or fan pages of artists kind of fill that hole. They're the ones that plug the holes of like covering you when you go randomly to the gym, of talking about who you might have unfollowed in your friendship group, of talking about this particular deal that you might have in the work. They're the ones that cover all that sort of like minutia, only the fans, hardcore fans stuff care. So she has one of her Instagram pages or sorry, Twitter fan pages called Doja HQ, which had over 5,000 followers deactivated. Another one called The Kitten's Room, which kind of started the whole drama the kittens controversy which had over twenty thousand followers that's got deactivated and then the last one here is doja cat news um that had over forty seven thousand um fucking followers they've also de deactivated all because of the kitten controversy which has been fucking hilarious essentially she doesn't like that her fans call themselves kittens she thinks it's cringe she would rather they didn't but the funny thing is when you go on here, um, big up Mobs World, Mobs World was able to get this screenshot from 2020 where Doja Cat on, in, on Twitter herself made a poll. Doja Cat in 2020 made a poll on, on, this, on Twitter where she says, because I don't feel made morally right pet naming you guys, I need you all to pick one and stick with it because see, I see this question floating around so much. What do we want to be? So she had kittens, brackets litter, and cubs brackets pride and most of her fans voted for kittens 74 percent so doja cat took part in naming her fans kittens and then years later got offended and pissed off when her fans started calling themselves kittens and thought it was cringe and lame and basically told them to unalive themselves for doing so which is absolutely hilarious so she got over it and tried to make her fans feel bad about it by basically kind of mean girling them right by basically acting as if like it wasn't cool uh you know making them feel ridiculous when she's the one that actually took part in the fucking exercise in the first place i fucking love this um fucking turn that happened right in real time and then of course you have here charlie xcx who i've been obsessed with for ages i fucking love charlie xcx um and she says doja cat is being so grumpy which i agree i don't think it's anything that deep i just think she's having a moment um she you know probably woke up one day and just was kind of over it the obligations of Birkin being a pop star are fucking grueling i've my kind of gut feeling is this this is a gut feeling i've always had being oops being a fan of fucking doja cat too right here's my gut feeling being a fan of her music here's my fucking gut feeling my gut feeling is this my gut feeling is that i've always thought doja cat is a bit of a terrible person like outside of music. I feel like she's not a very likable person. It's not a bad thing not to be likable. I think you could say the same thing for like Nicki Minaj is a good example, right? I feel like there's some people that are not likable, but they're just so talented it's undeniable, right? They kind of get away with it in that regard. And sometimes you, they kind of temper their personality to sort of be, be a bit more palatable. But I feel like Doja, unfortunately, just has a very unlikable personality. It may be because of how, you know, her humor, she's a bit deadpan. She's a little bit sarcastic. She's a little bit snarky, a little bit full of herself. Um, then, of course, I think a bigger issue, which people don't really talk about because I guess, you know, when it's women, it's different. But I feel like her just only liking white dudes has really rubbed people up the wrong way. I'm really, I'm sure of it. I don't know why this makes sense, but I think it does. Because I feel like her fan base is so fragmented. She needs like a core. So if she had like that kind of like core, quote unquote, black following, it would help. But I feel like a lot of black Americans don't like her because she doesn't really identify herself like that. She seems a little bit self-hating. In my opinion, that's what I personally think. Again, I could be wrong. I personally think that. But then I think the underlying part of Doja Cat which I've kind of got the feeling about, is this also. She's one of those people, and I've seen it before in my kind of little scene of creatives who are trying to make it, 
some and I've had tendencies doing it myself sometimes. I, I've had sometimes tendencies of doing it, so I think it's just I can notice it in people. Sometimes when you're talented at what you do, when you think you've got a you know when you think you've got a gift in whatever art that you're into, whether it's contemporary art, whether it's photography, whether it's making music, but you haven't been noticed yet, you can sometimes build up a sense of like animosity, a sense of like bitterness, a sense of almost entitlement and then anger or something because you haven't made it yet. Like how dare these motherfuckers not know how amazing I am. Then when you finally make it, it almost feel, you're almost kind of filled with contempt for your audience for only getting it now, for only realizing how amazing you are now. There's a bit of me that kind of feels that because I feel like Doja Cat has always been super talented and super, you know, amazing in her own regard. But imagine Doja Cat was always talented, but she had to blow up off of the back of that Moo song, right? Bitch, I'm a cow, whatever it shit is. Imagine what that does to your mental. If you actually are a creative, intelligent, super forward thinking artist that has to dumb down your artistry to make it. Then she makes it and it kind of makes her feel a little bit like, fuck, man, I had to fucking put on a fucking stupid cow bikini so you got to give me a chance, because you know, to make it. And now here I am and you're all trying to make me feel like I should be, you know, humble and appreciative. Nah, I'm the fucking shit. I've always been the shit. You, you guys just didn't clock on early enough. So a part of me feels like she has a bit of that energy in her and it kind of comes out in certain times. It kind of just, rah, you know what I mean? It's weird to describe it. It doesn't really make any sense, but I've seen it before. People who are genuinely, especially in fashion, you see it. You see a lot of fashion people, especially like assistants, like studio assistants and shit, who generally think they should be the creative director. And they have this weird in, kind of like bitterness, this kind of anger in them where they kind of feel like they're like an undiscovered, you know, talent um, that they're deserving of this level of success. And sometimes it can come out in terms of like they treat their underlings really badly or it can turn out where they just cross them the right way and they took like i've met ben, many vms for instance vir visual merchandisers right which eric griffin's um wife rachel is one of them at target which is hilarious right but i've met many visual merchandisers in fashion who have the biggest egos in the world because a lot of those visual merchandisers are like um frustrated or like you know um fashion designers they never actually made it Maybe their brand fumbled, or maybe it kind of it went out of business. Maybe they never got the chance to design for a house or whatever it may be. So they always kind of see themselves like as if the field that they're working in is kind of beneath them. But obviously they want to be in the industry, but it's kind of beneath them. So they kind of exude that attitude and they walk around type of thing. It's really, really strange. Honestly, I swear to God, it's really strange to see. But I feel like she's got a little bit in that in of that in her. So when her fans try and like make her feel like she should be humble and kiss their asses because they're fans of her, she's like, no, bitch, you were always going to be a fan of me because I'm fucking amazing. But it just took too long for the fucking industry to clock on because the industry is what they are. I feel like that's what's happened to her, in my opinion. Anyway. I don't know if I'm right, but I feel like kind of there. Um, Uche is saying in the chat here, kittens is cringe. I don't blame her for coming to her senses. <laughs> okay, fair. Rodeo is saying Uche isn't a fan of kittens. Yep, yeah, no, I don't think she is. Um, yeah, exactly. The, the uh, what's uh, Rodeo saying? Fair enough. But if it's making you a millionaire, but that's the thing, though. I honestly do think creators that exist where they feel like they would have been a millionaire regardless. Like fans are just they're always gonna be there. They're always gonna exist. And I'm sure there are some artists that also think the most important thing is the artist, not the fans. I think nowadays it's a bit fifty fifty because of how making it kind of relies on a bit of collective effort. No one really makes it in a silo on their own. You kind of have to make it. Even if you make the work yourself, someone has to notice you, right? And then it kind of gets blown up that, that way. So I feel like that whole like soul genius sort of thing, right? Lone genius sort of thing doesn't really exist anymore. So even though you have that kind of attitude, you can't really have it because your fans did play a role in your success. Because if your fans didn't notice you or didn't care about you, then you wouldn't be as successful. You know what I mean? You can't really force a fan base on anybody, really, um, in that respect. So I think that's what's kind of going on. That's my that's my kind of guttural feeling of what the deal is currently going with fucking here. And of course, to end it, to end it, to end it, to make it fucking sweet, a video comes out. I think this was filmed a couple of years ago. No, yeah, last year, of Doja Cat on IG Live, um, allegedly sniffing a bit of coke while she's on IG. Personally, I don't understand why this is a big deal. Maybe because I'm from Europe and Pacific, I'm from the UK, right? There was, I remember there was a report that came out years ago that they found like the highest amounts of fucking 
traces of cocaine in the House of Commons. I think they were sweeping down the fucking, you know, the toilet seats and the toilet things and, you know, tables and shit. And they found loads of fucking coke residue everywhere. So especially in the UK, it's the number one drug in Europe. Everyone does it. And it's not that, it's not that crazy. It just is what it is. I remember there was a, I think I remember seeing a report. I'm going to say it was Peru. I'm going to say it was Peru. Peru or maybe Bolivia, but there was one country in South America that I remember someone telling me where like, the price of cocaine was like $10 or something stupid like that. And the, 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 the basically what that person was saying was that cocaine in that country is like done like people smoking weed. Everyone does cocaine recreationally. Like, they, you know, they're doing it at lunch. They're doing it at the dinner table and shit. Like families do it together. It's not that big of a deal because it's so cheap and so readily available. Um, so I kind of think it's the same sort of thing in, in the UK or in Europe overall. People do coke all the time. It's a one, I feel like it's a one drug that sort of like unites everybody regardless of your class. I feel like there probably, there's probably more people in Europe or in the UK specifically who do coke than weed. I swear to God. Whereas I feel like in, in America it's probably the opposite probably the other way around, probably more people that smoke weed or take edibles and shit than, than smoke, than, you know, than do coke. But for some reason, I feel in America, because coke and crack are so closely linked, you guys have this idea that if people do coke, they're doing crack. Whereas I feel like in the UK, maybe because we're a little bit, you know, we're fucking all fucking addicts in our own way, everybody has their thing. So the guys that are into H are into H, the guys that are into crack are into crack, the ones that like weed like weed, the ones that like coke like coke, the ones that like weed. I mean, it's very segmented. There's not a lot of fucking people thinking, oh, because you're doing this, it's like a pathway drug. No, nah. there are people that only smoke, there are people that only do pills, and there are people that only do certain other class A substances. So this isn't that big of a deal, but this is what happens when you get, when you get quote unquote canceled online. People just find all this random shit about you online and just regurgitate it. But I'm also very mystified at the fucking tendencies of you Americans to do drugs on Instagram live. Like, why are you guys so addicted to going on your phones and like doing the drugs in front of people like strangers? Like what, what is that all about? There's so many celebrities that do that. Like they get caught quote unquote doing it. But I feel like it's a thing that everyone kind of does jumps to Instagram while they're high, like jumps on fucking twitter while like everybody's fucking on social media while you're high like why do you, why are you broadcasting all the fuck shit you're doing online on live it's like the worst thing possible i'd feel like to do like in front of a fucking audience when you're in that kind of zone maybe i don't know maybe i don't really know what i'm talking about but i feel like it's a very strange thing to kind of do overall but americans love to fucking do it they love a good um they love a good jumping on social media while getting fucking smashed up it's very bizarre <laughs> let us live <laughs> yeah i'll let you guys live i'm just like okay i guess like you could do it any other time you want like after work in the kitchen on the toilet out like, you could do it anywhere else away from a fucking phone but the same way like fucking um jamoran he only likes fucking pulling out his blicky when a fucking instagram phone is around the same thing that you guys when you see a fucking phone you suddenly pull out the fucking chopping cards you pull out the straws Right, exactly. <laughs> Radio yeah, drugs made them do it, and then you fucking get crazy about it. Um, Game Bread says sherbet is big in the UK. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. UK is a number one, I think, in the Europe. Um, for cocaine usage, I'm pretty sure. Number uno, number uno. Um, and anyway, last point here with the fucking Doja. I love this exchange personally because I feel like a lot of fans, a lot of sorry artists would want to say this to their fans. So Doja was on Instagram threads, said as follows. My life rules, my style, my attitude. A fan replied, Doja Cat dot, yeah, Doja dot cat dot Iran, right? So Doja's Iran based platform of fans said, I want to hear you say, I do love you guys. As usual, you say to your fans. And Doja replies, I don't though, because I don't even know y'all. She's like, I don't fucking love you, photo fuckers. Another one, another fan replies and says, And we don't know you, but we have supported you through thick and thin. Mind you, you'd be nothing without us. You'd be working at a grocery store, making songs on fucking garage band, miss high school dropout. Fucking brutal. Like your fans know you best, so they know how to really poke you. And then she replies and says, nobody forced you. I don't know why you're talking to me like that. Like you're my mother, bitch, you sound like a crazy person. So I kind of like this attitude. Like I said, I think this is the ultimate version of punk. Like in an in a 
in a society where people overly try to make it seem like they love their fans and they go over the top with how much they love them. Oh, I love you guys. All this sort of nonsense. It's quite refreshing to hear someone say, I don't love you because I don't know you. I don't want to get to know you. You guys are weird. Like, it's actually quite cool. That's actually the most punk thing you could do. Like, go fuck yourselves, buy the music, come to the shows, buy my merch, keep it moving. That's actually quite cool. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of have to respect her level of fucking go fuck yourself, you know? <laughs> I love the energy. So big up Doja Cat for not fucking caring about her fans and saying, hey, leave me the fuck alone. Mind your business. It is what it is. It is what it is.